Hello everyone, welcome to GGN. Today is Wednesday, January 30th, 2013. My website is ggnonline.com and on YouTube my channels are ddarko2012 and ddarko2013. Um, all the headlines and links should be in video in the YouTube's video description unless I have problems. On the first article I have up, and I'm just going to cover different stuff in this third video, is Grandmother Sioux City Police Department over June flash grenade incident. I actually covered this back in, when it happened. Police were looking for a person who posted threats on the internet. And it says here that a uh, 68-year-old woman, Evansville woman, who was uh, at home with her granddaughter last June when police in SWAT gear tossed in a flash grenade into her home and forced their way inside to serve a warrant, has filed a lawsuit against the city and the Evansville Police Department, which, you know, is like regular people that aren't responsible for this are going to foot the bill, the, the city taxpayers. I'm not even sure if you could actually sue the police department, but, uh, you know, who pays for them would be the city. So, you know, ultimately, their taxes are going to go up to pay for the Evans Police Department lawsuits, or, uh, what, they'll just uh, collect more revenue through uh, fines and that. So, police came up empty-handed in a search for evidence about threatening internet posts, but only after damaging the house handcuffing the woman and her daughter and seizing their computers. It says actually the police department and the SWAT team executed the search board uh, with a local television crew in tow to memorialize the raid. The lawsuit continues. The officers smashed uh, their window and storm door and threw in a flash uh, bang grenade that created property damage in addition to destroyed the window and storm door. The 68-year-old woman and her daughter were ordered onto the floor at gunpoint, handcuffed, and paraded in front of their neighbors into police vehicles. Then you have police take on while this couple facing 60 days in jail for rescuing an injured baby deer. So Indiana couple saved a wounded baby deer and nursed it back to life, saving its life and giving it a home. They named it the Little Orphan Danny. When Indiana state officials got word of the courageous act of compassion, they ordered the deer euthanized because government wants to kill everything you love. It says when the deer escaped right before it was scheduled to be killed, and yes, I think the couple probably set it free rather than have it killed. The man and women were charged with unlawful possession of a deer. They now face a $2,000 fine and 60 days in jail. Another example of government police state, and it says it's on top of it, seemingly countless other stories of similar police state insanity, such as armed government raids on raw milk distributors. Like this story here from January 25th, another family business destroyed morning land dairy raw milk cheese raided. It says in business 30 years with not one customer ever getting sick, 18 tons of product seized to be destroyed by the Missouri Milk Board. 18 tons, man. There's a boy that's five years old and he faces school suspension for building a gun out of Lego. So it's just another story that seems to be popping up uh, once a week. Legos can transport kids to imaginary worlds and get them in real trouble. A five-year-old is facing suspension after building a Lego gun at his school in Massachusetts. It says here the school warned the parents that their son would be suspended from its after-school program if he had another gun incident. So yet even if the firearm was pieced together from colorful plastic bricks, uh, the parents are aghast. It's not like he's designing a machine gun. His dad said the principal says the school needs to maintain a safe environment. While well, someone uh, might think that making a legal a Lego gun is just an action of a five-year-old to other five-year-olds, that may be a scary experience. So that's what the officials and authorities say. Got to have a nice, tranquil, uh, passive um, environment in high schools or in just schools in general. But it's kind of weird because you know, you notice in high school, and even in, in grade school, I mean, people, children can be vicious towards each other. So it's not really all that tranquil. But I think that's part of it too. That's, that's part of the indoctrination to get them used to just hating everybody and fighting with everybody. And of course, going along with uh, everybody else or going along with certain groups, uh, you know, so that you could be accepted into the, into the herd, into the clan. Swine flu vaccine gave my son narcolepsy, so furious mom is set to sue the government over a vaccine. So get down here eventually. A mom claiming her son developed narcolepsy after getting a swine flu vaccine is threatened to sue the government. So he had the condition within three weeks of the vaccine and now sleeps for 19 hours a day. He can fall asleep every five minutes, even when he's walking, eating, and swimming, and he suffers sudden seizures when he laughs. It says here they received the vaccine from their general practitioner, on January 21st, 2010, was told that, uh, or she was told that he was at risk of the H1N1 virus because he was under five. See, that's that's just the irony, right? Is 
they say that the most high-risk people, which are elderly, useful seeders, uh, children, the youth, so you got to start eugenics early, and pregnant women, which is future life. So this full-on attack. So they, so they found uh, kids given anti-swine flu drug Pandemrix had a 10 times bigger risk of developing the disorder. So next up, walking angel girl who performed at Obama's inauguration shot dead in Chicago. So 15-year-old girl who performed at Obama's inauguration last week was shot dead Tuesday while hanging out with friends after school in a bullet-scarred Chicago. Also uh, a gun-free zone as well. So cried by her family as a walking angel, she was standing under a canopy in Vivian Gordon Harsh Park when a gunman ran down an alley, opened fire, and fled in a white car. So pretty interesting. I mean, what uh, what was the motive here? This was at 2.20 p.m. It says, I like how they put this. A 16-year-old boy was wounded uh, in, in the incident, but revenue collectors said Pendleton, who had no criminal record, was probably not the intended target because he had no criminal record. Yeah, so I guess you could just assume that people with no criminal records aren't going to get shot. And it's kind of the ridiculous logic of the good guys and the bad guys. It's kind of like the um, uh, down in Texas, we were talking about the active shooter um, education course or whatever, basically what they recommend to students. And one of them is, besides playing dead, is, is when you see police, uh, when you see the good guys, you know what I mean, do what they say until they get the bad guys. Oh, speaking of which, here we go. Um, so the describer's honor student and all that. It says here, as usual, the bad guy aims, but he never hits the other bad guy. He hits the other, he hits the one that hurts the most to lose. So they're thinking that this was, uh, that this was actually just kind of by accident. So, so it's just a matter of days after the happiest day of her life, she's gone. So, uh, you know, to me, this kind of seems like a hit. <laughs> uh, I don't know, maybe not, you know, maybe just looking in too into it but um you never know with this type of stuff you got blood sacrifices and all kinds of crazy stuff pushing more you know just another way to push gun agendas and gun control agendas but uh helicopters spotted in houston texas watch the raw footage so we go in there check it out following reports of military exercises occurring in miami black helicopters or patches whatever this week scaring the crap out of people gunshots and machine guns this uh, local affiliate shot video of military-style helicopters roaming the skies of Houston, Texas. There's also been reports of gunfire in the area as well. So, so they're overseeing a multi-agency uh, training drill at the old Carnegie High School in Houston's South Side. Reportedly, armed men in fatigues, a lot of firearms, what many believe were real live rounds. The Army didn't give any additional details regarding the training and what it's all about or why it's being conducted in Houston. So, wow, there they go. And this is what you're seeing, like the state troopers now. Um, completely federalized. You'll see, like, they all have, like, this, uh, this uh, camouflage. It looks like they're ready to go to war, man. So one local uh, resident said they didn't understand what was happening when she saw military helicopters flying over. When you see this, you think the worst. When you hear this, you think the worst. They said to the, uh, to the news, I felt like I was in a war zone. It was nonstop. I was terrified. So that's the point, was to terrify the locals, get them used to it, and uh, create a more simulated environment, a more realistic environment by not telling the people that you're going to do this. Another resident said the Army should do a better job of alerting the locals. Well, they don't have to. They don't give a shit about you. They don't have to. You know, the People's Army. F that. It's not the People's Army. That's why they'll, they'll suspend your kid for making a Lego gun. They'll do whatever the hell they want to, you know. So Miami-Dade County argued that the training exercise in Miami was, quote, routine, and that, quote, designed to ensure the military's ability to operate in an urban environments, prepare forces for upcoming overseas deployments, and meet mandatory certification requirements. Arkansas Towns Martial Law Plan, so it's updated, says backlash met uh, plan for officers with AR-15s to patrol, um, stopping everyone out walking for their ID. It, pretty interesting, because I think it was just in Missouri that uh, that uh, the, the officers of the one police department in particular was going to purchase AR-15s with their own money. So, like I said, they tried to take them away from citizens, and then they are going to start arming themselves. Um, but also, just on a quick side note, is that I think you know I was thinking about this earlier with all these gunshots. You hear about all these crazy shootings at gun shows now, and um, it almost makes me wonder if, if, like I said before, that they want people to go out and buy weapons and ammo. You, know, you help fund the military-industrial complex because they have pretty much a monopoly on firearms and the firearm industry. So you're supporting the, the monster, the, the beast, uh, by doing that, playing into that uh, gun-grabbing fears um, concept or operation. 
And so it almost seems like they try to just flood flood the market or just flood the streets with all of these weapons. So in, in order to do the, that's what I'm saying, they want people to go out and buy all these weapons in order to, and, and so they just get into everybody's hands and everybody you know doesn't know what the hell they're doing. They don't know safety checks. They don't know they shouldn't point, any, point their weapon at anything they do not intend to shoot. Keep your finger off the trigger. You know, just don't leave it in your pocket and in the in, in the chair hanging where where you know the babysitter can get to. I mean, people are just being stupid about it. Uh, so and you know, and then people go out and they think that there's going to be gun laws, and there really ever never really is. I mean, we'll see, but um, it just promotes people to go out and get guns, and then all these people have guns, and then you get people get shot, and they say, oh, see, that's why we need you know even regular people that you know pro NRA and pro gun uh, you know gun uh, firearm advocates. Uh, will even say enough is enough i've heard that you know enough is enough so this is deep psychological stuff and then of course you have guns everywhere guns i mean the dude just the amount of blood gore and violence that is on that is in television and most movies i i can't stand to watch it but it's like if you're other with other people you kind of kind of you just go along you know to get along and you end up watching the crap and it's just man is it bad and, and then they wonder why, you know, people make guns out of Legos and stuff like that. It's a gun-obsessed culture as far as, um, as far as the media goes. They put it out there, and then when the young people pick it up, pick up on it, you know, then they're demonized. I mean, it's real, real, some real uh, sadomasochistic psychological crap that they pull on people. So says, according to the local news reports, the police department canceled two town hall meetings to discuss the heavy-handed policing plan followed from outrage from the residents. The police cited public safety concerns to cancel the meetings. Meanwhile, the mayor's reportedly dialed back his rhetoric around the amped-up policing proposal. Uh, it says here the mayor said patrolling police would not constantly be uh, carrying assault rifles. Although announced to begin January, no SWAT patrols had begun yet. So this is after people, it was met with rage and the news picked up on it. But originally, following a rise in violent crime in Paragold, an Arkansas town of around 26,000 residents, the mayor and police chief announced that starting this month, police and SWAT gear carrying IAR-15s would patrol the streets. If you're out walking, we're going to stop you. We're going to ask uh, why you're out walking and check for your ID. Says the police chief, I'm going to keep moving fast here. Cary Grove drill to include uh, shooting blanks and hallways. So this is from the 29th school shooting drill planned for tomorrow in the far northwestern suburbs has many parents upset. So it's a code red drill at the school have included somebody shooting blanks from a gun in the hallway in an effort to provide our teachers and students some familiarity with the sound of gunfire. See, most realistic simulation, right? During the drill, teachers uh, will keep the students in the rooms, lock the doors, and draw their curtains. Police will sweep the building. So if they do what they're told, they carry out the curriculum, and that's their job in an indoctrination camp. Get them used to this stuff, these raids. From the school's request, they want to let the students know what the sound of gunshot might be should that occur in their school. So, yeah, you know, they don't, you don't hear what a gunshot sounds like, you know, even on TV and stuff like that. I know it's not real life, but still. Officials use... But they've done this uh, somewhere else uh, as well. October 22nd, 2011, high school. It goes on here. Doors were locked and police with dogs moved in. Students stayed huddled in the classrooms uh, where they were told to stay away from the windows. It goes on here and they thought it was just a search for narcotics because they're used to that now as well. These uh, little uh, going through your lockers. Uh, drug sniffing dogs combed the school while students stayed in locked classrooms believing that an attacker was roaming the halls. Pretty crazy. They actually uh, kind of misled these people by saying that it was a uh, that there was a shooter out there when really it was a kind of a drug pat down. Some kids were freaked out by it. These drug raids. It was a terrible civics lesson. But they'll do these things. Parents outrage that elementary school uses padded solitary confinement cell to punish students. So there you go. If they do that, they'll do that. Three shot at Phoenix office complex. Manhunt for the gunmen under the way, underway. And there was actually a picture of like 10 or 15 of these guys. You see them every now with these shootings. These guys with these camo look like military. They're like sheriffs and state police and SWAT. I guess it's the new normal. So the Sandy Hook officers encountered several individuals as they approached the scene. Of course, they, after their handler discussed with them that as part of an operation, they probably let them go. Uh, date on Social Security death record for Adam Lanza, the Connecticut shooter, is December 13th, 2012, one day before the Sandy Hook massacre. Psychiatry to label entire families with a mental disorder called parental alienation disorder. U.S. Senate approves Skull and Bones John Kerry for the Secretary of State. There's an earthquake 5.3 in Oregon and also in Chile 6.8. And Windsor ends water fluoridation 
After 51 years, this is GGN and I'm Darko. Thank you.